Vitamin D. Everyone loves vitamin D, but does it actually help with testosterone? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today we're going to talk all about the data on vitamin D in terms of does it increase testosterone. Now, before I get started, I just want to remind you guys that I have a free ebook called Better Sex, Better Life that goes over my top 10 tips to improve your sex life. It is completely free, so check it out in the description below. And would love for you to read it and give me your feedback. So according to a study in 2008, 1 billion people in the world suffer from vitamin D deficiency. And it's in medicine, we know that vitamin D is a risk factor for things like insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, infectious disease, and autoimmune disease, and even increased mortality. Now, even in the male reproductive system, there are vitamin D receptors in multiple locations and in particular in the Leydig cells. Now, these are the cells in the testicles that are responsible for testosterone production. They have a gene called CYP2R1, which encodes enzyme 25 hydroxylase. Now, this is the enzyme that helps convert cholecalciferol into 25-OHD, which is a form of vitamin D. And so it's hypothesized that if these Leydig cells don't work properly, it could lead to lower levels of both androgens, meaning testosterone or other male hormones, as well as vitamin D in the body. And in the lab, when they look at human Leydig cells in a, uh, in a dish exposed to vitamin D, they actually change how certain genes related to steroid production are expressed. In the lab, then, it leads to a notable increase in the production of testosterone. In mice studies, they've seen that vitamin D improves the functionality of sperm and improves testosterone levels. So let's get down to human data. In 2019, they published a systematic review looking at eight studies that were randomized controlled trials investigating adult men who receive vitamin D supplementation and assess the impact on serum total testosterone or sex hormone binding globulin level in compared to placebo. Now, in these eight studies, they looked at anywhere from 40 to 129 men in each study, and in totality, they had over 1,000 participants. Now, all of these men had a baseline vitamin D level of less than 75. Abnormal is somewhere around less than 25, and most of these studies were conducted in Europe. This is important because in Europe, you're going to get a lot of fair-skinned individuals who don't have a ton of sun exposure, and so their baseline vitamin D needs may be different. Most of them got supplementation called cholecalciferol by mouth or orally, ranging from 600 units to 4,000 units per day or 60,000 units per week. Now, they followed these guys anywhere from six weeks to 144 weeks. And they also looked at study quality and risk of bias in the studies using these sort of standardized ways to assess bias. And generally they were all good quality, except for one that had fair quality. So generally good studies, randomized controlled trials. And so the overall effect of vitamin D on total testosterone based on all of these studies was not significant, meaning that there was no significant difference. Even when you looked at subgroups, meaning they got vitamin D prescriptions weekly versus daily, they had vitamin D for longer versus shorter, meaning less than 16 weeks or more than 16 weeks, or they got a different dose, meaning less than 3,000 units per day or greater than 3,000 units per day, there was, again, no significant difference. No matter how you sort of slice the data, there was no significant impact on testosterone levels or sex hormone binding labelin. Now, again, if you're new here, I've talked about sex hormone binding globulin before in a previous video, but essentially it is a binder. It binds testosterone, so it's not available to the body for other purposes. Ultimately, this study concludes that vitamin D supplementation doesn't really impact testosterone levels. However, they do acknowledge that having additional studies looking at vitamin D for a longer period of time in men who have both low levels of testosterone as well as low levels of vitamin D may show different results. So another systematic review was conducted in 2020, and they looked at two different groups of men. One group of men had vitamin D levels of baseline below 20, and the other group had greater than 20. 
and they essentially found 18 studies with nearly 10,000 men. So this is a significantly bigger study than that thousand group. And they had 10,000 men who had vitamin D deficiency and 10,000 controls. And they wanted to assess whether there was a difference in circulating total testosterone levels in these men. So this is not like giving supplementation and seeing if there's a difference. This is actually looking at baseline testosterone levels. And vitamin D deficiency, as I mentioned before, is defined by the Endocrine Society as having a vitamin D level of below 20 nanograms per milliliter. And generally, all of these studies were considered high quality, again, except for one that only recruited young men between the ages of 18 to 21. So it was not really generalizable. So they also did, again, a sub-analysis. And in this sub-analysis, they called this group frail. And so what this group was, was men who had over typogonadism, meaning they had low serum testosterone levels with symptoms, men who had chronic spinal cord injury or who were elderly or referred for coronary angiography or essentially imaging of your heart vessels. And lastly, men who were recruited from hospitals. So they were already hospitalized for some reason. And so these all together were taken as men who were frail. So in this study, they found that in all comers, there was a slightly significant difference in terms of men who had low vitamin D also having lower levels of testosterone, specifically total testosterone. But when they looked at the frail subgroup, those, those men who had all those conditions that made them less healthy versus men who were not frail, they found that that difference was significantly greater, meaning men who were frail had even lower levels of testosterone compared to men who were not frail. So what does this mean? Simply, it means that men who have low vitamin D levels and low testosterone likely have similar risk factors. So if you have chronic medical issues, you're more likely to have both vitamin D deficiency as well as low testosterone. But this study in and of itself does not confirm that supplementing with vitamin D is going to improve testosterone. So another review in 2023 looked at 10 randomized control trials using vitamin D supplementation in terms of looking at testosterone boosting. And so the two largest trials reported negative results. So they did not see an increase in testosterone compared to those who did not receive vitamin D. There was one small study that showed a significant benefit, and this was specifically in football players in Eastern Europe during the winter. And they had the goal of preventing a vitamin D deficiency due to the lack of sun exposure in the winter. And they did see a significant increase in serum testosterone levels of 6.2% in men who received vitamin D versus those who did not. However, when I look at the totality of the evidence, there is essentially no robust scientific evidence that supports that taking vitamin D as a supplement actually increases serum total testosterone. Now, if you have vitamin D deficiency, you should be supplementing your vitamin D. There's a whole host of benefits in terms of receiving vitamin D. And remember, vitamin D is important for bone health, muscle function, immunity, and even brain health. It's thought to maybe even reduce the risk of more serious issues like heart disease and autoimmune conditions. So I highly recommend that you get your vitamin D checked at your primary care doctor to make sure that you are getting an optimal level of vitamin D, especially if you don't have a lot of sun exposure day to day, or if you have darker melanated skin, you may need more vitamin D. Now, is vitamin C safe? Well, there are some adverse effects that have been reported. Now, most of the risks or side effects tend to happen in people who are taking high dose long-term supplementation or those in children. Now, that's not to say adverse effects never happen at all. According to the American Poison Control, it actually has been reported that the cases of 
high exposure to vitamin D causing adverse effects has nearly doubled. And in fact, half of those cases, about 11,700 cases per year, are related to or involving children under the age of five. Now, what are some side effects? So one of them is hypercalciuria, which is essentially having too much calcium in the urine, which is a concern for me as a urologist because it can put you at higher risk for stone disease or kidney stones. In one of the trials, they saw this hypercalciuria in anywhere between 4 to 8% of participants. Now, in rare circumstances, if you continue to have high levels of calcium, not just in your urine, but your blood, that can lead to kidney damage or even calcification of some of the tissues in your body. Now, this is again, very, very rare. Bottom line, get your vitamin D levels checked. If you're low, supplement them. Make sure to continue checking your vitamin D levels because the issue with supplements is sometimes the amount that's in the supplement is significantly higher than what's on the bottle. So we wanna make sure that you're not getting too much. And so continue to monitor that. Uh, but ultimately, it's for a multitude of benefits and that may or may not and in this case, unlikely to be boosting testosterone. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you are enjoying this, make sure you check out my playlist on testosterone boosters. I've made a whole host of videos and I've got a couple more to share with you coming up in the next couple weeks. As always, I'm gonna take care of yourself because you're worth it.